uh, technical interview session. I, this is, you know, I'm ending my third year of doing that one. And uh, that session actually came from my frustration of interviewing people. <laughs> and I realized uh, my, my company, after we released version one of our product, uh, for some reason decided we're only going to hire beginners. And I pleaded with them not to do that. I, I even went to them and said, can we hire like one inter intermediate for two beginners, please? Mm -hmm. <laughs> and the, they said, nope, beginners. And I, ugh. and since I, you know, pretty much interviewed every .NET programmer that came into the company because I was the expert, right. then I had to do that. What was, a, what was a typical interaction for you that you were disdainful about? Well, until I figured out something that worked, uh, I couldn't, I didn't hire not one. Uh, right. I couldn't do it for two reasons. One is they sucked at interviewing. You know, because they're, they're beginners. I mean, the most right. of them are very young. They're straight right. out of, uh, you know, a CS degree or something mm -hmm. like that. And I guess they don't teach interviewing in school. So they weren't very good at it. Yeah. They weren't prepared. Right. You know, when I was interviewed last, last year, they asked me, what's the number one thing programmers don't do for interviews? And I said, they don't prepare. That's the number one. Okay. And, um, and they weren't prepared. Um, the other thing is, I found out, uh, I've always known uh, through uh, my almost 20 years of interviewing people, is um, uh, CS degrees are, are, are spitting out people I can't hire. Really? Yeah. They, I don't know what they're doing or thinking, but mm -hmm. I can't hire them. Well, a lot of them in interviews that I've done with people is this too much focus on uh, the theoretical side, mm -hmm. which is important. Mm -hmm. You would agree? No, I agree. But not enough focus on the actual practical, yeah. practical applications and getting your certs you like having a class for a cert or you know preparing these individuals so as soon as they leave they walk out the school doors bam they can get a job and uh, that's been my frustration uh, when talking with people and I'm sure your frustration when interviewing people who are who are coming out because it's so much on the math side a little too much on the math side uh, where they hit them so hard with all this different stuff that they really don't use over here on the programming side, right. sometimes. Right. Now, I'm not talking in all cases, but in some applications. Right. Well, so would you say that's the? Oh, totally. And, and I was talking to somebody here at the conference, and they said, you know, they're still making them do uh, writing compilers. And I go, what? What for? You know, no, no one needs to know how to write a compiler. Right. You know, they yeah. need to know how to write business software. I mean, right. that's where the money is. Right. You know, and 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 that's all, all I've done is to write business software. That's what right. .NET is good at. You, right. know, you don't write device drivers in .NET. You know, you write business software in .NET. Yes, you can write games and things like that, but mainly you make the money at writing business software. Exactly, because businesses make money. Yeah, <laughs> right. and you know, they're churning out people that know nothing about that. Not only that, but these beginners I was um, interviewing, because I was really frustrated and I was venting to somebody and they said, well, do you expect them to know C-sharp or .NET? I go, no, you know, because I can teach anybody anything as long as they're willing. That's one right. of my, that's basically one of my slides in my talk. Right, personal it, initiative. Well, they want to be willing, they have to be willing to learn. Right. Right, because programming changes every day. Right. And if you're not willing to learn, you're going to be stuck that in evolution. a revolution. Right. Um, and so I was venting and, and they asked that question. I go, no. They don't need to know C sharp. You know, I can teach them, but they don't even know object oriented programming. Right. They don't know what inheritance is. Right. Out of a four year degree in a college. Right. I was floored. Right. You know, because if they at least knew that and just the basics of just programming, I might have hired them. But they didn't even know that. They were turning out people like that. And I, I've always been very uh, uh, displeased with what the colleges are doing. Um, kind of the good thing that I'm doing now with that is... Uh, yeah, how do we fix it? <laughs> well, one of the, the things I'm doing to fix it is uh, it just so happened that uh, one of the, the women who worked at my last company's husband is one of the big wigs or VPs or something at National University, mm -hmm. um, which is big in my side of the country. Mm -hmm. And um, it's one of those, it's not a, you know... A, you know, a state college. It's just one that you could pay for and go and, you know, get your degree quick. Yeah, right. And um, we have uh, Batarat colleges and things like that. Yeah. Here, yeah. So uh, they invited me for this, you know, panel uh, they wanted to start. And I said, yeah, okay. You know, sure. I accept anything. <laughs> <laughs> 
So I was, I was kind of worried, you know, about what would happen. And then I was sitting there, I got there early as usual, and uh, I was sitting there and the professors come in and they were all old. <laughs> You're like, oh geez, they probably have them writing code on paper. Yeah, I was going, no, this is not gonna go well. Cause I had a, I had something to say about yeah. them. Yeah. And specifically. Right. And so it finally got around to me. <laughs> I flat out said, I said, you are turning out people I can't hire. Right. They looked at me going, what? How and dare I, you say that, sir? <laughs> I said that. And they looked at me like I was crazy. Thank goodness the guy from Yahoo piped up and agreed with me. <laughs> yeah, right. Is there someone in the crowd over there? All right, we can build from that. No. Otherwise, that probably would have been my last meeting there. Yeah, right, 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 right. Right. But the cool, really cool thing is they actually seem receptive to changing because, it. You know, so, at a place like that, we're gonna, it's going to take years right. to change you know, their curriculum. Right, right. I wish it would take a quarter, but <laughs> right. it's going to take years. Because we're in the programming side used to seeing our results fairly quickly. Right. Um, and we, but I have hope. <laughs> right. That um, you know, I'm hopefully going to be able to change that university at least. Right. To turn out people I can hire. Right. You know, and they and, can be productive in their lives. Right. Yeah. Like and that's that's about. what I need when I'm forced to hire beginners. Mm -hmm. Right. <laughs> we, we need beginners. Right. Right. Everybody's a beginner at some point. And sometimes, sometimes, not saying all times, but sometimes I've found when you hire somebody that is sort of green. That they sort of know what they're talking about, but the, maybe not so much on, on actually what you want them to know, but you teach them how your way. Mm -hmm. And that's actually more beneficial for them because instead of learning from, you, you know what I'm trying to get by saying Yeah, you know, it, especially if you work for a good team who have you right. know, good people on it, maybe right. like me. They're going to learn exponentially Then you're, you're getting mentored right. by you know experts that will teach you the right way. Yeah, And, and that's kind of what happened to me at this company. Um, I worked at with these two other people we started the classes at UCSD oh, okay. you know that was the first great team I worked on and I learned a lot yeah. you know until the company went under you know? <laughs> <laughs> right. but that wasn't our fault right, right. you know but um, that really spoiled me yeah you know because now when I go to companies that aren't like that I get really frustrated you don't have that that, that ability to bounce ideas off and get you know input of like oh I tried that that doesn't work but this works mm -hmm. and we can make you know cut and find new ways to, to make this functional yeah so you know getting back to the beginners right so I'm, I'm trying to make changes you know to actual colleges to right. make it better um, so this kind of loops around to how I started okay yeah. so uh, me myself and the other hiring manager were horribly frustrated with these beginners coming in and, and not being able to hire them and wasting our time and, um, and, and again, not just because um, they weren't good at interviewing, but they right. didn't know what the, they didn't know the basics we needed them to know. Right. So um, we didn't know how to get that out of them. We had trouble with it. And so, you know, we we're thinking, how can we fix this? And um, the, the other manager said, well, you know, I'm going to give them a coding test. I'm going to make them write code that reverses a string. I go, huh. Okay, so he went to a meeting, and I was thinking about it, I go, nah, I don't think that's, I don't think that works, and I don't think it will work. I said, um, let's make them bring in code that, that they've done. they have written, which is basically what I did when I was a beginner. I brought programs, right. right? So, you know, we told the recruiter, you know, because we had internal recruiters, we, uh, we told the recruiters they must bring in code they wrote on a USB stick, and we're going to put it in the computer, they're going to bring it up, and they're going to have to either run it, they, they can run it, but they most they have to uh, explain it to us. Yes. So, um, <laughs> this worked awesome. Yeah, because I'm sure that you had interaction from, from the interviewee. This is why I did this, this is why I called this, this is why I did this, and I'm sure from your perspective it was like, okay. Yeah. Um, beginning to figure out a little bit more about you and about what you can do and can't right. do and stuff. Exactly, and, and, and it worked. You know, so the first guy who came in, beginner, we told him to do that, brought in code. And the program he showed us was a program he wrote for his father, because his father uh, had, uh, because of some medical issue, had to go to the VA all the time. And he needed to keep track of, make it easy to keep track of his mileage because he got reimbursed from the government mm -hmm. somehow. Yeah, definitely, yeah. So, it, you know, he wrote a program to help his father do that, and .NET. Mm -hmm. and, um, she brought it in and showed it to us. You know, I would never write code like that. 
Right. But he could explain his thought process, which is one of our, one of the main things we need to do when we interview people is we need to understand their thought process. And why they want to do it, attack this particular problem. This right. Way. And so he brought it in. He showed it to us. Like, I would never write code like that. We hired him. That guy turned out to be freaking brilliant. <laughs> no, I'm he. No, I, he yeah. immediately was doing stuff, at, you know, in our company that again would never do. It was too far advanced. Right. But he did it. But having him do that other way would have would probably not have generated the same kind of result. Yes, and so. <laughs> the sad part is, once he realized he was a really good engineer, he left the company and went somewhere else. <laughs> yeah, right. So, and so the second person that came in uh, was a girl who um, actually comes to my user group. So then they already get brownie points for that. Yeah, right, right. You know, because I know they take their own time to learn. Mm -hmm. So again, she brought in a code. Uh, I, I figured it was probably code she wrote at her company. Mm -hmm. She brought it in and was you know showing it to us. And I was looking at it and, and I, was, I said. Is this in production? And the other manager hits me. He goes, shut up. <laughs> <laughs> Don't critique their code. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> I go, okay, <laughs> I'll be quiet. And we hired her. And she turned out to be awesome. And once she realized it, she left the company. <laughs> uh, you're just like, yeah, uh, yeah. That's kind of the downside because yeah. this is one of those industries, you know, um, kind of like the music that you, you, if you get too good, you're too good for those around you. And then you keep going on and doing yeah. that thing. But that worked all perfect. Right. And because while they were there, I'm sure that they produced. Yeah. And well, we mentored them yeah, and exactly. produced, and we gave them, you know, we gave them. That gives you guys more cred, and, and they speak highly of you, obviously, when they move on to the next thing, hopefully. Mm -hmm. yeah. And, uh, yeah, I'm sure that works for...